Greetings YouTubers, this is my 2002 Nissan Xterra 3.3. We are replacing rod and main bearings with the engine still in it. That's right. Still got an engine setting it up. My last video was on how to take this oil pan off, the starter, and the front differential, which is actually outside. Um, I'll put a link right about there so you guys can go back and look at that if you have questions or so forth but there is the bottom cage that holds the main bearings on and there are the bearings you can see a lot of scratches uh they're not worn down terribly bad they're not down to the copper but um with all these like this you know it doesn't take much to start getting some oil pressure issues now my oil pressure is fine never had an oil light and I never really did do an oil pressure check. I probably should have done that before I tore it apart just to make sure or just to kind of, you know, know what we stood with oil pressure. But it was nothing really bad. Uh, it's just when I revved it up at high RPMs, I could kind of hear the rods knocking just a tiny bit trying to sing. And, you know, with 200,000 miles, two, three head gasket changes <laughs> and oil in the uh, water and oil mixed in the engine. I actually would have expected a lot worse but they're not terrible so here is a new one that I put in hopefully the camera is focusing well enough for you guys it doesn't look like it'll lay into the viewfinder but we'll find out in the video here when I upload it there is that there is the new one in pretty easy to put in slides right in these are standard bearings by the way here's the rear main that I took out and uh, it's not terribly bad got some places in it where it's scratched a little bit the crank seems to be okay. We'll go there and look at that. But, like I said, if you have all these bearings just wore down just a little bit, then you're going to start getting oil pressure issues eventually. So, for 200,000 miles, I don't think this is bad at all. And on the back here, it says standard down here, standard bearings, uh, so forth. So, I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, spec between the crank and the bearing, what um, how far it should be apart, how many thousands, but that's really not important right now. The purpose of this video is just to show you if you have a Nissan and you want to change out your rod and main bearings, you can do it. Yeah. So uh, there's that. And let's see, there are my rod and main bearings. I got all these for $29 free shipping. And the only one I was worried about, uh, the only one what I'm trying to say I was worried about was this one here because you can see how this is made. This actually slid around like this and I slid the new one in just like this kind of got it started up under there took a little screwdriver and kind of caught it back here and just gently pushed it around and it went right in and of course there is that one so let's go up under here all right so we're under the engine here looking straight up there's a the crank pulley and there's all my rod bearings back cranks in really good shape hardly any scratches whatsoever i just kind of put it on here slid it around and got it up in there and i got it off by taking a very small screwdriver if i can find it here um just be careful don't scratch the crank and if i get the light just right maybe this will work out for me on this side i just kind of put the screwdriver right there and kind of tapped that one there that's the new one i put in of course tapped on a little bit and it started to move and i got on this side and got my screwdriver back here and i just kind of gripped it and kind of pulled it around and it came right out and the new one went in fairly easy too takes time but you know five or ten minutes and it was in um they got some scratches on them i don't see anything terrible i'd like to get some scotch bright on here but i don't think it's really worth it right now because I couldn't get it on there anyway because the other bearing old bearings are still there and there's one here and one right here now you can see this one's actually started out I'm gonna take my screwdriver after you get started and just kind of grip it right here and it should come right out of course it's gonna be kind of hard for me to do this with one hand but you can see it's moving a little bit so that's how I'm gonna replace those. Pulling these rod bearings off. These are the ones that I really wanted to see what was going on with, because these are the ones that are kind of making a little bit of noise, you know. And I've restored this vehicle, so I figured it was nice to put rods and mains in it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these off here after we get these other ones in. So that's how I'm doing this. Uh, so for torque specs, you're on your own. I'm not gonna tell you what I torque these down at. 
because there's always that guy on YouTube, you know what I'm going to say. So uh, there's a lot of information on torque specs and all that, so you might want to look that up. But for now, we're going to go ahead and pull these off here and uh, see how bad they are and go from there. All right, so we just about got this one out. I'm just going to show you how I do this. I just take the screwdriver and go in here and kind of turn it, put some pressure on it. It moves this bearing. Once it comes down so far, you can actually, where the oil hole here is, you can take your screwdriver and move it around and it's out. All right, so it's probably going to fall, but well, maybe I can catch it here. I'll drop my screwdriver and it's out. That's how, that's how I'm doing it. You gotta, you know, take your time at it. There's only four of them, so. There we go. There it is. It's out. And like I said, be careful and don't scratch the uh, crankshaft. It doesn't look too bad. And There's that bearing. Looks, no, it doesn't look bad. Let's see, whoops. <laughs> I've seen worse. Let's go ahead and light and look at it. All right, so here's the one we just took off. Yeah, I know, I've got my dirty gloves on, but I'm putting them in with uh, clean gloves and clean oil. Uh, I'm using some rebuilding oil, just wipe it on here. You can find that online, do some research, but anyway, uh, some scratches, but you see this one here is what it should look like, so. Don't see a lot of difference there, but nevertheless, that's how I got it out. And on the back, you can see where I kind of tuck my screwdriver, stuck it up in there, and scratches there kind of grabbed it and slid it out and we'll put this one in we'll put some oil in it get it started in there and right here you can put your screwdriver right here kind of catch that a little bit and help it go in and just kind of push it up burner like that and make sure this little indentation right here goes in up into the place where it's cut into the block and or cap or whatever so so that's that all right so just, I'll show you how I'm getting these out. I might as well do it on this video clip here. Uh, since I'm just about done here, I got it started. I took a screwdriver and I just kept turning it and it moves. And when it gets down so far, if your hand gets tired, just take a little screwdriver and catch it right there on the end, that little lip, and that bearing. It'll spin the rest of the way out. Just knock it off like this. And you can see there's the oil hole right there. It's probably going to fall on me. I'm not going to be able to catch it, but you get the idea. And be careful. Like I said, don't scratch your crank. Just light taps. And out it comes. Yeah, that one's wore down a little bit. It's got a lot of, sh it's getting down there, so I'm glad I'm changing these out. And like I said, the crank's not all that bad with this one. It's got some scratches, little tiny scratches, but nothing terrible. But that's how I do that, and here's how I put them in. And now we'll go ahead and start this one here. I'll wipe this crank down just a little bit more. Looks pretty good. All right, so that's wiped down, and now we'll go ahead and... I, start, I wipe my gloves off. They're pretty clean now. Stand like that. And it actually starts in really easy, believe it or not. Take a small screwdriver and spin it around. Like that. I probably should be using something like a plastic spud. But this here works pretty good for me. I can get the rest of the way in. Take my little screwdriver and tap a little bit right here. There we go. There we go, it's gone. There we go. Kind of like that. I usually take the edge of the screwdriver and kind of gouge the back of the bearing and spin it. That's how I usually spin them. Because there's nowhere to grip, that's for sure. Now we'll tap this the rest of the way around. Just 
take your time at them and it's all the way in and you see no scratches everything looks good wipe the grease around there so that's how i'm getting them in and taking them out so i'm gonna go ahead and finish these up here and we don't have a whole lot more here to do i hope this video helps you out if it does hey let me know where you're watching from right now all right so in this front one here um it was really tough to get out until i realized if you loosen up the alternator bolt here put, get some slack out of those, these belts and up on top and if you have a nissan you know what i'm talking about loosen this bolt up here and kind of loosen all these belts up because you only need a couple thousands of clearance to make those bearings a lot easier to slide out and believe it or not with these belts are tight it's actually pushing on this crank this whole crankshaft and there's like a thousands or two here of play that i can use now since i've uh loosened all this up of course you got the timing belt on there too it's still you know pulling this crank up but now since i've done that this comes out a lot easier i mean no problem i was a little worried there so i realized those belts if you loosen those up it makes a big difference so i don't know if i can catch this or not probably gonna fall down on me here let's see maybe i can catch it it's our last one let's see, just about got it out there Oop, yep, just like i figured <laughs> all right i got it all right now as you can see here this one's wore down too a little bit but i've seen a lot worse that wasn't too bad and you can see little gouges here that i got on the screwdriver kind of turned it and uh, if I get the screwdriver, I put the screwdriver and I kind of pushed on it and turned it like that. And it just slowly kept coming out. So, I don't know. Kind of ghetto, but you know, it's, it is what it is and it's whatever works, right? All right. All right, we'll look at the journal. I mean, there's some light scratches, but I can't really feel it. So, other than that... Uh, We'll stick this one in and we'll have the top done. All right, let's go ahead and get this one in. Put this in delicately. Right there, hold that, get my screwdriver and go ahead and start it here a little bit. And there it goes, went right in. If I hadn't loosened those belts, this would have been pretty difficult. Well, she's tight. And it's almost in, yes. Now to tap this last one all the way in, I'm going to use a bigger screwdriver with a flatter end. So it doesn't scratch anything. How about that? It's in. All right, so there's a nice clean look at it. And you can see um, right there where the little groove is cut into the case for that bearing. It's in there flush. I don't know if I can zoom in. The camera only zooms in with clarity only so far. Yeah, that's about as good as I'm gonna get right there. But you get the idea. They're all the way in. The key is here to make sure you keep these bearings clean. Don't get any dirt on them. Just put some uh, Rebuild lube on them, if you will, and you'll be good to go. And after doing all that, getting our mains in the top of the engine on the crankshaft, here's the bottom of it. They're setting in there nice and pretty. All we got to do is put some oil on them and bolt this up. But for now, we're going to go ahead and take off the rod bearings. That's the easy part. So let's go ahead and look at them real quick. All right, so here we go with the first rod bearing in the back. See what she looks like. Uh, well, the crank looks really good, and they're not terrible, but you know, they wore down a little bit. I think you can see that. They're getting down there a little bit, but the crank is in excellent shape. Wow, it's really nice. So there's that. Huh. And remember when you put these back in, see that little hole there? That's an oil hole. In some of these so make sure you put all that back in especially you know take your time making sure you know which bearing goes where 
So uh, this, these bolts here was a 14. These were actually easy to take off. It wasn't no problem getting these off, so, hmm, interesting. All right, so we'll go ahead and change all these out. Well, as far as I can tell, they look like they're standard because it still has the Nissan stamp there. It doesn't say STD like some bearings do, but these are the original bearings, so well, I think we're good there. So We'll measure them just to make sure, but I think we're okay. But this bearing, you can see it's got down there a little bit. Like I said earlier, with everything just wore down a little bit, it does make a difference in the oil pressure. So, And all these bearings have got to get the right amount of oil for that engine to last a long time. And here is the top of that bearing. Not terribly bad. Some shiny stuff there. Not quite down into the copper yet, but uh, these are also, looks like, standard bearings. Oh, and by the way, I am using this 1 and 1 16th inch. I believe uh, it's, it fits pretty good on that crank pulley. I just kind of turn that engine a little bit, bring those rods all the way down as low as they go, so I can actually uh, get to them easier. This is what I'm using, so you might want to have something like this on standby to make your job a little easier. All right, everyone, as we continue our shade tree ghetto type uh, bearing and main crank bearing replacement here, uh, I got all the uh, crank bearings replaced. Uh, there was really nothing to show you, just two bolts. I'll show you what the bearings look like, but the new ones are all in. All I have to do now is go ahead and bolt on my cage here with the uh, eight bolts. Uh, that's going to be pretty boring. <laughs> Probably not even going to show you that. But uh, I guess right now, one thing I want to stress is before you go any farther, recheck all of your rod bolts. Make sure they're nice and torqued the way you want them before you put anything else on because it's easy to miss one. So if you do that and get these six bolts here torqued down for the cage, then all you got to do is put the oil pan on it and uh, hook up a few things. Put the starter on You can actually start it up. I'm going to actually start it up without the front differential in it to make sure I don't have any major leaks or anything. But it's all done. Everything went on really good. And also here's something I found out that was pretty interesting. Here are all the bearings that we tuck out, or I tuck out, I should say. I'm always a one-man job, it seems like, one-man band here. They're all the bearings. Now, like I said earlier, if I think I mentioned this earlier, you only need just a little bit of wear on each one of these bearings in the entire engine to start losing some oil pressure and having that engine start to wear in places. Now, I said earlier, it doesn't look like it's down to the copper. Well, I tuck this bearing here, the front one, and I scratched the heck out of it, and it turns out there's no copper in these. Um, so these were probably worn down a little more than I thought. I took some measurements and I found some of these to be up to about 4,000 so worn down compared to the new ones that I put in. But uh, I scratched this really hard and there's no copper in this there. So I'm not sure what kind of bearing this is. Some of them I replaced have copper. So I mean I really gouged the heck out of it and I couldn't get any copper to come out of it. So having said that, uh, that's about it. We've got our cage here ready to go in and there it is All we got to do is uh, torque the bolts down. Like I said, you can go online go on Nissan uh, Site or just go into some Nissan forms and you'll probably find all the information you need for torque bolt settings and all that so we're gonna put this in and When we come back here the, the next thing you'll see is hopefully this thing running I'll put back together and like I said, I got a uh, link somewhere in the video here probably toward the end too of taking the oil pan and starter off and uh, getting all that off. It's pretty easy. There are some pretty great tips there on how to get that starter off, especially. There's a long cable on it. And that really helps out a lot. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing together. All right, everyone. Good news. It's all finished after all that work and all them bearings there uh, that weren't very good. It's all back together, and i got to say, it runs pretty good. Started up here in a second. I'll give you a look at it underneath. No leaks. I just painted the old pan black. I was going to paint it red, but I figured, what's the point? No one's ever going to see it. But it's cleaned up, painted. I don't have any leaks. Everything's all hooked up. And the only other thing I have to do is hook up this uh, bar right here, this drag link, and put the front differential in. Not that big of a deal, but I really wanted to start it up and hear it. And let's go start it up real quick. In here, find the key. And the oil light goes out. I checked, we've got oil pressure circulating, all that good stuff. You can hear it running there. Mm 
No more rods trying to sing at high RPM. It, what a difference. Sounds really, really good, so I'm happy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put everything else back together, start driving it in about three or four days. I'll give you guys an update. And I will put a, uh, a comment in the comment section, and I'll pin it and let you know how well it's been running. But I think I'm good. Sounds really good. It's idling really good. Quiet. Right about there, about 3,000 RPM, I would get a slight rattling of the rods, but I don't have that no more. So I took care of it. It was a lot of work. But in the end, it might be worth it because this thing should run now at least another 50 to 100,000 miles with any issues. So, you know, this took me probably two days, you know, three or four hours here and there. But it worked out really well, and uh, I'm happy. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And uh, let me know if this helps you out or uh, satisfies your curiosity if you put rods and mains in a Xterra like this 3.3. Like I said, it's kind of ghetto, kind of shade tree, but hey, it worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. So, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.